each layer only affects itself, not the previous one. So let's say we're talking about only the layer of delivery. In other words, we're not talking about uh, uh, the, the addressing, we're not talking about the sorting, we're just talking about the delivery. He delivers it. So let's say where we deliver it to the house, he currently walks his route. Now you're gonna get a truck, so it'll go faster. That one part of the process can change. Is the delivery now faster? Yes, it is. Is any of the other layers approved? No, they're not. But just because we improve one layer, we have improved everything because that goes faster. Let me try to show you. Let's say this took a certain amount of time. Each one of these took a certain amount of time. What do we do? We just improve this one here. That's all we improve. But if you add the time to this, the time to this, the time to this, and now this time is shorter and add the time to this, we've now made the whole thing faster because we made that one layer more efficient. Now, what could happen is somebody else could make this layer more efficient, somebody else could make this layer more efficient, and now we have a cumulative process. Just because we made one layer more efficient doesn't mean we made any of the other layers more efficient. But by making that one layer more efficient, we have made the entire process more efficient. Okay? Now, that's not really on any test. That's just their idea, so I'm explaining it once. I'm not going to go over this part of the lecture ever again. Okay? We're trying to make it easier to understand and easier to solve. Okay? So, here's our seven layers. Now, I know you're going to write them down right now, and it won't mean much to you. Application, presentation, session, transport, et cetera, et cetera. All right, now let's go back. Next slide, we're coming back to this in a minute. Each layer has its own set of the functions. The functions of each layer communicate and interact with the layers above and below it. Now, here's my favorite one. It says here that the transport layer works with the network layer below it and the session layer above it. Let's read that one more time. The transport layer works with the network layer below it and the session layer above it. Gee, I don't know, does it? Let's check on that. The transport layer works with the network layer below it and the session layer above it. The transport layer works with the network layer below it and the session layer above it. Sure enough, that statement was right. But that statement was only right because we knew the order of the layers. Had we screwed up the order of the layers, it would not have been right. Therefore, we have to know the exact order of these layers and what they do. Now, if you don't understand it now, don't worry, we're having a lecture on it to make you understand it, but you do need to understand it, okay? So, the transport layer works with the network layer below and the session layer above it, and we just verified that it did. Now, give me a drum roll, and then again, this stuff will not be on the upcoming test. This stuff would be on the test for Thanksgiving, but the bottom dot. You were introduced to the TCPIP model in previous chapters. And you learn HTTP, POP3, DNS, DHCP, which we will need to know for the upcoming Monday test. Well, watch the next slide. Take a deep breath and hold on to your shorts. Okay, so here is FTP, DHCP, TCP, ICMP, ARP, all those things. Now, instead of the four layers, here's the seven layers. So TCP is at the transport layer, IP is at the network layer, these guys up here are at the top layers, and, and, and these guys down here at the bottom layers. For next week's test, I need to know what every one of these do. doing, the next week's test. For the Thanksgiving test, I need to know the relationship to these and this, and we will get to it, we have enough time, okay? So here's our TCP and all the sub protocols, and here is the seven layers that it compares against. Let's keep going slowly. Never mind this. Okay. Forget the first thing. Look at this one. Each layer of one computer behaves as though we're communicating with the same layer on another computer. This is known as peer communication. I'm coming back to this slide because it's meaningless unless you see the picture. Watch what I have. Here is my computer, here is your computer. I've got my seven layers, you've got your. My presentation layer talks to your presentation layer. My network layer talks to your network layer. My data link layer talks to your data link layer. Well, there are seven layers. Oh, that must mean there are seven wires connected from my computer to yours. Well, wait a minute, I look in. No, there's not seven wires. There's really one big cable, that's it. Well, how can my layer be your layer? Well, notice what it says. It doesn't say they do it. What it says is, 
Each layer on one computer behaves as though it were communicating the same layer on the other computers. I'm going to paraphrase that. It behaves as though it was directly connected, even though it's not. Now watch carefully. My presentation layer and your presentation talk to each other through a dotted line, even though there's no direct connection. My transport layer and your transport layer talk to each other through a dotted line, even though there's no direct connection. My network layer and your network layer talk to each other, even though there's no direct connection. That means my layer and your layer talk to the corresponding layer as if they were connected, even though they are not connected. Well, Professor, how do they do that? Gee, I don't know, some kind of magic. Okay, stick with me. All right? That's peer communication. Now, you say, okay, Professor, I kind of understand what you're trying to say, but I got one big question. What the hell are these layers doing? Why did you put these layers in there? What are they in there for? I can memorize it. What are you doing with them? The next slide is going to tell you. Pay attention. On the way down, I build the packet. So what happens is, let's say I want to send you my term paper. Well, let's, a, a better one. I want to send you the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, I want to send it to you. Well, I know I can't send it that way. I will have to send it. I got to send it in packets and frames. What I have is the text of the Gettysburg Address. I got to put the packets and frames. How do I do that? I go down the seven layers and create a packet or frame. As I go down the seven layers, the Gettysburg Address gets stuff added to it, and it becomes first a, a data thing, then it becomes a, a packet, and then it becomes a frame. Remember what a frame was? We had the MAC address to the packet. Going down the seven layers is known as encapsulation. What am I doing? I'm turning data into packets or frames. Now, lecture's over, right? Watch carefully, the smart people. On the receive side, what do I get? I get a lot of frames. What do I want to do with those frames? I want to turn them back into the Gettysburg Address. On the receive side, I go up to seven layers, and, and it also says strips its information, and does what I would call a strip tease, which means I take apart all the extra junk that I no longer need and turn it back into what? Back into the Gettysburg Address. So let's go over here, back one slide. As I go down the seven layers, I'm building a packet or frame. I send the packet or frame to you. I go up to seven layers and strip the packet or frame to get what? The original data back. That is the purpose of the seven layer model. On a test, going down the seven layers and formatting the packet or frame, the top of the slide, what's that called? Encapsulation. Going up to seven layers and stripping away the headers, what's that called? De-encapsulation. Know that for my Thanksgiving test. Okay, we got all that. I, I know I'm having trouble because I'm not interfacing with you and you're not saying anything. I'm not mad at that, but I'm hoping you're understanding this. Okay, now we begin, and here's where it gets difficult, so pay close attention. Remember, all this stuff will be not on the upcoming test, but all this stuff will be on the Thanksgiving test. So you're going to have to know it for that. And the reason I'm pushing this, I see a few people, I'm not going to call it by name, who seldom come. You might want to start coming to all the classes. Certainly don't miss next week. Certainly don't miss the review. Certainly don't miss our next test. But you might want to start showing up in class. Okay, the application layer. Now, first, cuidado. At the top, it's not layer one, it's layer seven. We're going seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're starting at the top layer, the application layer. Interfaces with the application. What does that mean? If I'm sending you an Excel spreadsheet, I put the data in the application layer. If I'm sending you a Word document, I put the data in the application layer. It talks to the application. Right now, don't worry about these things being at the application layer. You are going to have to know that eventually, but we'll be doing that in some other chapters. Just know it talks to the application. Now, here's the next one. It's a little bit tricky. What does the presentation layer do? Well, the presentation layer is layer six. Wait, what do you mean it's layer six? Well, we're going seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's the second layer down, but it's layer six. What does it do? Well, do I have to memorize? Yes, you do, but it's pretty easy. 
it does data formatting. Now, how can I remember that? You're going on a date. When you're going on a date, what do you want to do? You want to present yourself. So how do you want to present yourself well? You want to look good. So what are you going to do? You're going to put a tie on. You're going to shave. You're going to take a shower. You're going to comb your hair. You're going to look great. Data formatting. How would you present the data? How does the data look? How does it appear? How does it print out? What is a presentation layer handle? Data formatting, data appearance, how the data looks, how the data appears, how the data is formatted. And what layer is that? The sixth layer or the set second layer down? Now, this one is definitely on a test, but it's pretty easy to remember, the session layer. Well, what's a session? You and I are talking. So, hey, I want to talk to you. I'm initiating a new session. Where do I do that? The session layer. Hey, I'm sick of talking to you. I want to hang up. Where do I terminate the session? At the session layer. But here's the most important one, the fourth dot down. I don't want to hang up. I want to keep going. So could you go a little faster? No, no, wait a minute. Could you slow down a little bit? No, could you speed up a little bit? Could you pause for a second? Now, could you keep going again? Could you go a little faster? No, no, could you go a little slower? Managing the mechanics of the ongoing conversation. Where is that? The session layer. One more time. I want to initiate a session. Session layer. I want to terminate a session. Session layer. I want to manage an existing layer uh, session by telling you to go faster or slower. Where do I do that? Session layer. Layer five. Well, wait a minute. Third one down. Yeah. Layer five. Seven, six, five. You understand presentation layer, how does it look? Session layer manages the ongoing session. Again, this will not be on the upcoming test, but it will be on the Thanksgiving test. Okay, now, here where we get something very sexy, transport layer. Okay? Transport layer, flow control and acknowledgements, pre-sequencing. Remember we learned in chapter six, or chapter five, I think, that TCP is a connection-oriented. So what makes TCP connection-oriented? Well, it verifies packet delivery. Well, how does it verify the packet delivery? Well, it acknowledges packets. What does it do? It resequences the packet, one out of 10, two out of 10. What does that? TCP. Where does it do that? At that transport layer. So all the stuff you learned about TCP, verifying packet delivery and being connection-oriented, is still true. Except now you're learning that it happens at the transport layer, layer four, four. So layer four, the transport layer, is the one that TCP is connection-oriented and does the flow control and the resequencing and the TCP handshake and all of that stuff. Okay, you see how the chapters fit together. Layer four, well, it's the, actually, it's the fourth layer down. We're going seven, six, five, four. Is this the most important layer? Well, it's one of the more important layers. I don't know if it's the most important, but it's one of the more important. And then you already learn that TCP stuff, which, by the way, you will have to know for the upcoming test. And I'll be reviewing on Wednesday when nobody's going to be absent. Let's keep going. Okay, now, here's, the, here's a real drum roll, the network layer. This is the layer that has the IP address. This is the layer that performs the best path selection. Well, wait, Professor, the best path, I thought that was done by routers. Bingo, zingo, look at the bottom. Routers operate at this layer. So let's go do the network layer. The IP address is at this layer. The router operates at this layer. It picks the best path at this layer. The internet operates at this layer. Why? Because routers are the internet. Where would you find the IP address? At the network layer. Where would you find a router? At the network layer. Where would you pick the best path? At the network layer. Where does the internet operate on? The network layer. Okay. ARP, IP, and ICMP are all at the network layer. I would say this is the most important layer, although when I say that, you got to be careful. You need all seven layers. None will work without the other. But this is the key layer because this is where we're sending the data.
Okay, we're done, right? Well, we got a problem. And that is, we still have to deliver the, the thing. So it was a packet of the network that had the IP address. How do I deliver? I got to add a MAC address. Well, where do I find the MAC address? I find the MAC address at the data link layer, layer two. So IP address is layer three, MAC address is data link layer two. That means here it becomes a frame because a frame has the MAC address, right? So a layer two frame consists of a header and a trailer. What's in the header? The MAC address. What's in the trailer? The error checking cyclical redundancy check code. Remember how we, remember in chapter two or chapter three, we, how do we make a packet into a frame? We took the packet and we framed it with the MAC address on the front and the error checking at the end. All this stuff from chapter three. And where do I do that? At the data link layer, layer two. Now we're done, right? Well, we got one last problem. Let's get physical. We're now at the physical layer. What do we do there? There we actually send the ones and zeros. So if you can touch it, feel it, measure it, or cut yourself on it, it's at the physical layer. All the wires, all the connectors are the physical layer. But look at this. The electrical pulse, plus three volt is logic one, zero volts is logic zero. Where is that? The physical layer. Fiber optic, light on is logic one, light off is logic zero. Where is that? The physical layer. Radio wave on, radio wave off. Where is that? The physical layer. So the physical layers will actually send the actual ones and zeros that you can measure. Some people think this is the least important layer. I would argue it might be the most important because if I can't actually send the ones and zeros, the whole thing doesn't work. Okay. What is encoding? Encoding is putting it into ones and zeros. Like just because I got a logic one or logic zero is meaningless. Light on logic one, light off logic zero, that's encoding. Plus three volts logic one, plus zero volts logic zero, that's encoding. See the difference? All okay. right. And here's the summary. I'm not gonna continue the lecture. I'm gonna go back and show you something. So let's try it. Application layer talks to the application. Presentation layer. How does the data look? There's the data representation, data formatting. How do you look? How do you present yourself? Session layer. Establish the session, terminates the session, and maintains the session. Transport layer. Reliable delivery, connection-oriented, TCP, right? Transport layer. Reliable delivery, connection-oriented, TCP. Network layer contains the IP address. If it has the IP address only, then what is it? It's a packet. Network layer, IP address, packet, routing. Routers are there, okay? The internet operates there. The best path, all at the network layer. Data link layer is a frame. Why is it a frame? Because the data link layer contains the MAC address. Here it's only the IP address. Here it's the MAC address. See the difference? And therefore, that's the data link layer, it's a frame. And the physical layer, it's actually a bit because we're now making it a one or zero that I can physically um, um, measure. Right? So we're, we're going to finish the lecture, we're going back. And I'm not doing this again. Oh, I'll go all the way back, but let me just try some. Okay, so application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, physical. Okay? Now, here's the problem. Not only do you have to know it in this order, but you have to know it by the number. Application is layer seven, presentation layer six, session layer five. And I'll tell you why that's true. The network layer, layer three, and the data link layer two, they often refer to just by layer numbers. So they'll say you have a layer three problem. That means it's a network layer problem with the internet. They'll say you have a layer two problem. What does that mean? It's a switch problem with frames and the MAC address. See the difference? And they don't tell you the name. However, here's the punchline to the lecture. If you're asleep, wake up. How can I memorize in this order? Well, A, P, S, D, blah, blah. Is there some way to memorize it? Well, there's several acronyms. So write these down. It's A, P, S, T. So all people, all people seem to need, all people seem to need data processing. All people seem to need data processing. Because why? A, P, S, blah, blah, blah. So top down, 
a lot of people seem to need data processing, application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, physical. We're gonna go back and do some more stuff, don't worry. However, some people wanna memorize the other way, from the bottom up. Is there another acronym from the bottom up? This one's a little humorous. So, people do not, see PTS, people do not throw sausage pizza away. People do not throw sausage pizza away. It is very important that you know the exact order because that, that thing, remember we said, the transport layer works, the network layer below, the session layer above it. If you screw it up, you got it all wrong. All people seem to need data processing. People do not throw sausage pizza away. Be sure to get the, the order and the number, and the number, very important, and the number, right? Okay, we all got that? Okay, I'll cover this later. And again, next Wednesday we're reviewing. We're going to need to know every one of these. For the Thanksgiving test, we want to know which layer they go on. But for the, thank for the test coming up next week, we've got to know what each one of these does. And we'll do a review on that on Wednesday. Okay, so let's, let's do this. Peer communication, my network layer and your network layer, my presentation layer, all talk to each other as if they were connected, but they're not connected. They pretend they are. Now there's one big cuidado. Physical layer and your physical layer, that is connected. To me, this should not be a dotted line, why? We're plugged in with what? A cat, uh, a cat six wire. So physically, my physical layer and your physical layer, they are directly connected to a wire. The other layers are not directly connected, but they talk to each other as if they were directly connected. That's peer communication. And here's the one that's the big one, and then I'm going to go on and do the review, and, and, and then I'll do the, uh, the lecture one more time, and then I'll do the ending. But here's the big one. Professor, it's all brilliant lecture, but why are we doing all this? Why we're doing all this is to do what? To build a packet or frame, and then receive the packet or frame and read it. So this is the most important. When I'm going down the seven layers, I'm taking the data and turning it into a packet or frame. That's known as encapsulation. Why am I doing that? Because that's the way I'm gonna send it to you. If I don't do that, I can't send it to you. Now, on the receiving side, I get a bunch of bursts of data. Well, I don't want a bunch of bursts of data. I want your term paper of the Gettysburg Address. How can I convert it back? I go up to seven layers and strip the headers away, and that's called de-encapsulation. What's the purpose? To make the frame or packet to send to you and to receive the frame or packet to read it. Does everybody have that? Okay, so because I have the time, I'm gonna do this very rapidly now, much faster. I'm gonna do the seven layers fast. The application layer, what does that do? It talks to the application, accepts the data. It talks to the application, accepts the data. That's all it does. What is a presentation layer? Data formatting, data appearance. How does the data look? How does the data appear? Presentation, how do you present yourself? Data formatting, data appearance. Session layer. I want to initiate the session. I want to terminate the session. I want to manage the ongoing session. I'm controlling the session, session layer. Transport layer, connection oriented, verifies packet delivery. All that TCP stuff we have to know all happens at the transport layer. The sliding windows, the acknowledgement, the SYNAC ACK, the flow control with acknowledgement, the sequencing one out of 10, all happens at TCP at the transport layer. Network layer, that's the one that has the IP address. That's the one that has the packet because the packet has the IP address. That's the one the router operates at. That's the one that picks the best path. That's the one the internet operates at. Network layer, layer three, internet operates there. And finally, not finally, but almost finally, the data link layer. That's where we turn it into a frame, why? 
the data link layers where we have the MAC address, the network layers where we have the IP address, the data link layers where we have the MAC address. And that's where you turn it into a frame to do what? To deliver to your computer. Remember, we only can deliver to your computer by frames using MAC addresses. The error checking is also there because that's what goes in the frame. And finally, the physical layer. Well, what's that? That's the layer that um, actually sends the data. So I'll come back to this in a minute. Encoding, putting it into the actual voltage or light pulse. Okay, where does that happen? Physical layer. But here it is. I'm sending it as bits in actual physical ones and zeros. Let's do it again. If you can touch it, feel it, measure it, or cut yourself on it, it's the physical layer. Okay, so wires, the electrical pulses, the plus five volts and ground, um, light on, light off, uh, radio wave on, radio wave off, all of that is at the physical layer, and that's where encoding takes place. Okay, I'm going to slow down and do this one last thing right here. There it is, application, presentation, session, blah, blah, blah. Application accepts the data. Presentation, data representation. How does the data look? How does the data appear? Session layer, okay? Establishes the session, maintains the session, terminates the session. Transport layer, that's the one reliable delivery. That's the one that's the sequencing. That's the one that's the SYNAC act. That's the one that's connection oriented. Network layer has the IP address. That means it's only a packet, IP address, packet. That means the router operates there. That means the internet operates there. That means the best path is operating there. Data link layer frame Y. Frame has a MAC address. The MAC addresses are there. Okay? And probably the physical layer is a bit. Why? Because you're actually sending ones and zeros. Remember physical layer. If you can touch it, feel it, measure it, or cut yourself on it, it's the physical layer. Now, I'm not quite done with the lecture. I'm almost there. But you are going to need the seven layers for the Thanksgiving test, not the test coming right up. One other thing, I'll just take a minute or two. This is critically important stuff. If you're going to take the Cisco course, before you can even enter Cisco, they demand the seven layers. This is a prereq for almost every other class, is to know the seven layers. So it's really important. Um, for the smart people, we're never going to, I mean, I'm going to lecture on obviously Wednesday, but we're never going to lecture on the seven layers again. We're done with them in chapter seven. But every chapter after this, chapter eight, chapter nine, chapter 10, we're going to use the seven layers. So we're going to use them as if we knew them. So you do have to know them. Okay, so we're done. We can go home. Well, we got a few minor little curves to do, and then we can go home. But these are somewhat tricky. Okay, so now we have a real thing, and I'm going to go through these slides backwards a lot. I'm going to jump around here. So the IEEE people said, you know what? We want to rewrite everything. We don't want the seven layers. So the student says, wait, professor, I just figured out these seven layers. I think I got them. You're going to now rewrite them all? There's a big fight. And the IEEE people said the seven layers are no good. We want to rewrite them. And there's two models. So what we did here is we modified it. Okay, and watch carefully. I'm skipping this for a reason. Here we go. Here's the original seven layers on the left-hand side. That's the OSI model. And the IEEE people thought, well, we want to change all of that. Oh, bull feathers, you're not changing it. Here's what we'll let you do. We'll let you rewrite this one. The data link layer you can break up, so this is important. This is the seven layer OSI model. This is the IEEE I802 modification. One more time, just this. OSI seven layer model, the IEEE 802 modification. We broke this into these two. Okay, I can memorize that. Yeah, you probably can, but let's try to understand it. So here we go back. The two lowest layers define how the computer is attached to the specific media. The IEEE modification expanded the model by separating the data link layer into the LLC and the MAC. So what does the LLC do? It controls data link communication, defines the use of logical interface points to communicate with the upper layers. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but let's go down here. 
Does this communicate with the upper layers? Yes, I can kind of understand that sort of. And now give me a drum roll, everybody. Okay, watch. What does the max sublayer do? Well, the max sublayer manages the access to the physical medium, communicates with the physical layer. Watch carefully. I told you the IP address was here, and I told you the MAC address was at the data link layer. Well, it is. Actually, it is, but it's really at the MAC sublayer of the data link layer. So where's the MAC address? The IP address layer is here. I mean, the IP address in this layer. Where's the MAC address? In the data link layer. It's really in the MAC sublayer of the data link layer. Now, let's read what it said over here. It said, manager's access to the physical medium and communicates with the physical layer. Well, let's see. Why does this communicate with the physical layer? Because if we drew this in here, this is directly connected to the physical layer, whereas this guy is directly connected to the network layer. You see how this guy talks to the network layer? This guy talks to the physical layer. Okay. So what we really should have done is put these two in here and made a little line between them. All right, let's try it again. The IEEE modification is simply this. You break up the data link layer, okay, LLC on top, and the max sublayer below. Well, what does the max sublayer below do? It says it communicates with the physical layer. Let's see. Does the max sublayer communicate with the physical layer? I think it does. Does the LLC communicate with the network layer? I think it does. This is the OSI 7 layer model, and this is the IEEE 802 modification. Now, I know what students are going to say. Uh, a professor, I can learn my 7 layer model, but I really don't have to know this, do I? Unfortunately, you do have to know this also. Yes, 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 yes. Unfortunately. Okay. This is a very simple um, lecture. You can see there's only 20 or 30 slides. And I'm, and I'm going to, we'll be out early today, but we're not going to leave quite yet. You understand how important it is to know this, though. This is really critical to know, okay, which is which. So one last time, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Um, here's our seven layers. All people seem to need data processing. That's our seven layers. Know that this is seven and this is one. But know that layer two, the data link layer, was artificially broken up to this by the IEEE people. And this is this, and this is this. Now, here's the punchline that I'm going to give you there before I go back to the beginning. They call the IP address the logical address. Where is the IP address? At the network layer, they call it the logical address. What do they call the MAC address? They call the MAC address the physical address. I always had a problem with that. The MAC address called the physical address. What layer is the MAC address on? It ain't in the physical layer. The MAC address is called the physical address, even though it's at the data link layer. And I often wondered, why is that so? Near as I can figure out, the MAC address is called the physical address, because even though it's at the data link layer, it communicates with the physical layer through the MAC sublayer. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickle peppers. You have to know that difference here, and this one here particularly the bottom one. Okay. Now, just one more thing, and I'm going to go back to the beginning. I want to just show this chart here that I went over. Here's the IEEE chart all the way through. Notice, I think we did this on the last test, 802.3 is Ethernet, and 802.11 is wireless. And I emphasized that for the previous test. 802.3 is Ethernet, and 802.11 is wireless, and it's still there. It still is. All right. All right. Now, I know we want to go home early, and we will. Let me just do something. Go all the way back to the back, because I'm not doing this a million times. We need a seven-layer model. We have it, okay? I'm not going to do the post office anymore. We would need to know, on the Thanksgiving test, this exact thing. All people seem to need data processing, that the application layer is layer seven, presentation layer is layer six, session layer, layer five, et cetera. We would need to know the number and the, and the name. And then, and here's the cuidado, what does each layer do? We're going to get out early, but I'm just going to go through this quickly one more time. Okay, well-defined functions. Never mind this. I'm not going to talk about this right now. Here it is, peer communication. This should explain. Let me show you. 
Do you understand the session layer? If I'm saying speed up and slow down, do you understand why my session layer is talking to your session layer and saying speed up or slow down? Is it directly connected? No, it's not. It's directly connected here. But it pretends it's directly connected and talk. My presentation layer and your presentation layer are not directly connected, but they talk to each other as if they were. My network layer and your network layer are not directly connected. We're connected down here. But they speak to each other as if they were. That's pure communication. And this is the most important. It would be on the Thanksgiving test, but know it. This thing about encapsulation, the encapsulation. What am I doing with all this stuff? Going down the seven layers is building the framework packet. When I'm going down the seven layers and creating the framework packet, I'm encapsulating the data. Going down the seven layers, building the framework packet is encapsulating the data. On the receive side, going up to seven layers and stripping it apart is de-encapsulating the data. And one more time, the receive side, I'm going up to seven layers. I'm stripping everything off to get what? To get data. That's de-encapsulating the data. My phone is ringing, but I never answered the phone during class. So whoever it is can go pound sand. All right, go away, phone. All right, let's keep going. Now, we're going to do this one more time rather quickly, and then I think we'll, 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 we'll leave a little early. But let's do it. And you, you would have to know every one of these layers of my Thanksgiving test. What does the application layer do? It interfaces or talks to the application. It accepts the data from the application. That's all it does. Now, again, I wouldn't say it's important or unimportant because you need all the seven layers to work together. But it's not one of the more important ones. Although if you didn't have it, it would work. See what I mean? Accepts the data, talks to the application. Presentation layer, how do you present yourself? How do you look? Data formatting, data appearance. How does the data appear? How would it print out? Presentation layer, data formatting. How does it appear? How would it print out? You will need all of these for the Thanksgiving test. That's why I'm emphasizing. Okay. Session layer is initiate the session, terminate the session, and then again, manage the session. Go a little faster, go a little slow, slow down, speed up. All that's a session layer. Remember, layer five, third layer down, we're going 765. Know the number also. Very important. Know the number. Manage the mechanics of the ongoing conversation. Transport layer is the TCP connection-oriented stuff. We will be reviewing that on Wednesday. Everything about, about the sequencing, the SYNAC act, and the sliding windows and acknowledgement, all done at the transport. Uh, I'm sorry. It's all done by TCP at the transport layer. That's the one that checks that the, that the data got there. Layer four. And for, in the network layer, IP address is here. The router operates here. The pa this is the packet, not the frame, because you got the IP address. The internet operates at layer three, the network layer. Know that. And finally, data link layer, layer two. That's the one that has the MAC address. If it has the MAC address, what must it be turned into? It is now a what? It is now a frame, because the frame has the MAC address. The cyclical redundancy check, which was on the last test, that's also on this layer. Because you make the frame by adding what? The MAC address in the front, and the error checking at the end. And where do you do that? At the data link layer, layer two. And finally, and I'd say the least or most important is this one. This is the one you actually send the data on. Blinking light, pulsating electricity, all layer one, physical layer. Wires, connectors, all layer one, physical layer. If you can measure it, cut yourself on it, or touch it, it's physical layer, layer one. I'm not going to do this for the fifth time, but there's the seven layers again with the same explanation, okay? Just know what he... One more time. At the transport layer, it's a segment. At the network layer, it's a packet. How do you know it's a packet? Because it has the IP address. How do you know the data link layer is a frame? Because it has the MAC address. You see how it fits in? And the physical layer is just called a bit because it's a one or a zero. 
And then unfortunately, 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 finally, we would have to know this, that we took the seven layers that we now understand, and using the IEEE model, we broke up just the data link layer to these two. Now, the most important, but the one you really want to know, of course, is this one, the MAC sublayer of the data link layer. Why? That's the one that has the actual MAC address in it. All right. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing. I know we're a little early. I'm going to stop sharing. I just want to make sure I have the attendance done correctly. One more time for the people who generally cut class. This coming Wednesday will be the review in the second half. Please don't miss Wednesday. There'll be a review. It will be on chapter four and five and six. A week from today on Monday, don't be absent. There's a week from today on Monday. There will be, we'll be starting lecture on chapter eight, but there'll be a test on four and five and six a week to Monday. So the review date is the 21st. And the exam date is the 26th. Okay, any questions, any comments? Anybody have anything they wanna say? We're way too early, but I'm, I'm really done with the lecture. Uh, Mr. Bianco, you're here. I want to make sure there was nobody I missed. Okay, does anybody have any, if nobody has any questions, you can begin leaving. Don't miss Wednesday's attendance and don't miss next Monday to take the test. The next uh, test would be on chapter seven, eight, and nine, and ten. Well, the test coming up is on four, five, and six. The test on Thanksgiving would be um, seven, eight, nine. Seven. Thanksgiving test is seven, eight, nine. And that's like the last uh, test. No, it's not. Oh, Versal, the twenty-sixth is the exam, which is October twenty-sixth, Monday. Monday, October 26th. No, Mr. Lopez, who asked, there's another test coming up before Christmas. It's a 15 week course. There's a pre Thanksgiving test and a pre Christmas class test. Four exams. Professor? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, did you uh, get me an attendance by any chance? You, I got at the very beginning. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, you have a good rest of the afternoon. You're still in your pajamas, right? That's why you can't yeah. activate the <laughs> and, uh, Of course, I got you. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of the day. Yes, Professor, you got you got me, right? Who's me? Well, who's uh, you? No, Christian Bianco. I did get you. You're the last one I got. Okay, thank you. Sorry for being late. Got me, Professor, right? I'll see you on the test is Monday and the review is Wednesday. Yes. Okay. The right. review. Very good. Have a good one, Professor. Okay.